Okay, so today I'm going to explain arguably the most important part of your ability to succeed with money that no one ever talks about. These stories are taken from the excellent book, The Psychology of Money, and I'm going to tell you about the story of Jesse Livermore. Jesse was born in 1877 and was considered the greatest stock market trader of his day. By the time he was 30, he'd be worth about $100 million in today's terms. So when the day of the greatest stock market crash of his time occurred, which started pretty much the Great Depression, reports of suicide swept across Wall Street. Livermore's wife feared for the worst, but when he came to the door, she was met by not a suicidal, but an elated Jesse. He just shorted the market on its worst day, and he'd made a fortune in doing so, about three billion in today's terms. But that wasn't the end of the story. Despite being incredibly fortunate to, to narrowly escape the biggest crash of his lifetime, Livermore became hugely overconfident, kept making larger and larger bets. He wound up in debt and eventually losing everything to the market. Jesse Livermore was very good at getting wealthy, but had no idea how to stay wealthy. So what I'm going to be talking about is the question is, should we be seeing these as two separate and distinct skills that we need to manage? It's kind of like the difference between a boxer with a lucky punch or an all-time champion, or what separates Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Warren Buffett from the thousands of unheard of entrepreneurs who built their businesses, but lost their fortune. The, the, the point is you didn't work as hard as you have done to lose what you already have. So a better question is, when we know that any sort of growth requires taking a level of risk, how exactly do we solve the right balance of risk? Enough to keep and build what we have, but not enough to lose it all. What is the difference between being sensibly entrepreneurial and just being too risky? The purpose of this video is to tell you how to do this. So the truth that one of the shortcuts to getting wealthy is understanding the nature of asymmetric bets which is a bet which has a much higher upside than downside. And I wanna be clear, some could argue that the art of being a good entrepreneur is finding your asymmetric bets. As Warren Buffett has said. I've told students, if when they got out of school, they got a punch card with 20 punches on it, and that's all the investment decisions they got to make in their entire life, they would get very rich because they would think very hard about each one. And you don't need 20 right decisions to get very rich. And in a world where people found it easy to become rich, side note to crypto, how do you make sure what you have achieved isn't just a flash in the pan? You know, what you really want is multi-generational wealth. This isn't easy. Merrill Lynch did a study saying 60% of wealth is lost by the second generation and 90% by the third. So where does your wealth building story end? Is it when you sign the papers to sell your business? Or is it when you help your grandkids have a great start in life? I think if we can just understand this, we can both agree there's something more to this than what meets the eye. There's more to staying wealthy than getting wealthy. So how can you do this? Well, number one is that you don't interrupt compounding. So to understand the art of staying wealthy, well, if it was to be put into one word, that word would be survival. The ability to stay wealthy is to master the art of sticking around. The reason this is so important is that for compounding to work, you have to stick around. Compounding interrupted doesn't work. So let's go for the makeup of the most successful investor of all time, arguably, Warren Buffett. Have you ever heard how cautious he is? At the Berkshire Hathaway meetings, he's regularly getting slated for having high cash positions. But his thoughts are generally that he has to be considering the risks that we don't see. He has to factor in the unexpected, and arguably he's got a large insurance business. Thousands of investors have come and gone in the time that Buffett has been around, and yet he has consistently stayed the course. And as I mentioned the 10 things schools don't teach you about money, the vast majority of Buffett's wealth was made in his later life. He let compounding work. This isn't just limited to the financial. You know, all good habits compound. Whether you're becoming a better rounded professional, improving your health, the incremental but consistent improvements make a huge difference. But if they aren't sustainable, then compounding can't work. Read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear if you're more interested in this. The difference between getting rich and staying wealthy is wealth has an inbuilt awareness of managing the downside. Okay, so the next one is your personal margin of safety. So next is about trying to find out how to manage this. So the famous investing book, Margin of Safety, is actually specifically on this topic, but about investing. And effectively, a margin of safety 
is the amount the investment can underperform while still delivering a profit. So your personal margin of safety is how much risk you can take while still staying afloat. What this means in a personal finance sense is that you've got to watch out for the low frequency but high impact events, be it a critical illness, your business being stopped by an event, or just managing your own personal liability when taking risk. It is being aware of the risk that you can't see and factoring that into the plan so that your wealth building doesn't stop completely because of an event. Because yes, compounding is the eighth wonder of the world, but it only works if you can stick around to see it work. And then finally, it's the barbell personality. So what I'm talking about is managing yourself so that you have both sides. A barbell personality is someone who is both aggressive enough to take enough risk to ensure they can grow their wealth, but is also sufficiently cautious to make sure that they don't get blown up in the meantime. I know it sounds paradoxical, but it is possible. In the same way that you can be an eternal optimist on the long run, but who understands that the world probably will fall apart every so often. Key thing that I just wanna try and get across is that there are two separate, almost completely contradictory elements to building wealth. And if this video has done anything, I hope it's given you something to think about, about those two sides and recognizing that you might be slightly better than one side than the other. And if that is the case, it's a question of how can you manage your personal risk so that you capture the benefits of the upside, but don't underappreciate the ability for life to throw all that life throws at you. This has been Principles Personal Finance. I appreciate you watching. See you next time.